The girl proactively sought out her teacher after class in order to ensure that she would graduate smoothly. The teacher was surprised that the girl had such a high level of awareness and understanding. A frivolous smile played at the corners of his mouth and his body relaxed. I will give you a very, very good grade if you would just study. The girl never expected that the teacher would be able to refuse such tempting conditions. But before long David was taken away by the police on charges of abusing his position to violate students. Everyone thought he would protest, but to everyone's surprise he acted as if he had anticipated it all along. What exactly happened? This movie is recommended for cautious viewing by all audiences due to its mind-boggling twists that will leave you feeling terrified and disturbed to the point of suffocation. The story begins with a magazine publisher who suddenly receives a call from a death row inmate David offering them an opportunity to interview him for a fee of $500,000 on the condition that a female journalist of his choice Xiao Mei conducts the interview. Xiao Mei finds the request ridiculous but to her surprise her boss readily agrees as David's case has always been shrouded in mystery and has never been reported on. The boss believes that the scoop is well worth the price. However what the boss never anticipated was that this decision would propel the magazine to instant fame. Soon Xiao Mei obtains the necessary information. David had once been a professor at a prestigious university. He was first in prison for raping his female student and while in prison he reformed and admitted to the murder of his longtime friend Kong Si in a heinous and brutal manner. This incident had sparked widespread concern in society at that time. However, David did not deny the charges, and he was eventually sentenced to death. On the fifth day before the execution, David suddenly recanted his confession claiming that he was innocent. Xiao Mei believed that David was simply grasping at straws. The chain of evidence at the time was very complete with fingerprints and bodily fluids all pointing to David. However, her colleague disagreed. ASA University professor David would not have made such a rudimentary mistake. At that moment, they could never have imagined that the final truth would shock the entire nation. Soon they met with David. Xiao Mei was perplexed as to why he had chosen her specifically. Because you do take things to your grave. It turned out that Xiao Mei had previously risked her own safety to protect the privacy of her interview subject, even refusing to disclose information that could have landed her in jail. During the interview David revealed the ins and outs of the situation. Six years ago he was still a university professor full of vigor and vitality. Even when female students took the initiative to show their interest he did not act inappropriately. However he had one bad habit. He was addicted to alcohol. At a cocktail party he was cornered in a bathroom by one of his female students and he ultimately gave in to temptation. However he had no idea that this particular student had already been dismissed by the school. During their interaction the female student manipulated David into leaving traces of himself on her all part of her devious plan. The next day David confided in his longtime friend Kong Si about what had transpired. Both of them were advocates for the abolition of the death penalty and had worked together for many years. As they were preparing to attend an event the police suddenly arrived and arrested David on charges of rape. All the evidence including the traces on the female student's body pointed to David. However just before the interrogation the female student suddenly withdrew her complaint and David was eventually released without charge. This incident, however, completely ruined his reputation. The first day of the interview came to an end, but David revealed to Xiao Mei that he had received an apology letter from the female student afterward. Xiao Mei was perplexed as to how this incident was related to the murder of Kong Si. David did not elaborate but asked her to return to the same place the next day. He was a well-respected university professor, but his life took a drastic turn when he was arrested and imprisoned for raping a female student. Even though the charges were eventually dropped due to the student's withdrawal, all of the complaint his reputation was irreparably damaged. He was dismissed from the university and his wife and child left him leaving him utterly devastated. However what no one could have anticipated was that not long after he would once again be taken away by the police this time for the heinous murder of his longtime friend Kong Si. All the evidence at the scene pointed directly to him and he was ultimately sentenced to death. However just before the execution he suddenly recanted his confession claiming that he had not committed the murdered. I in order to uncover the truth Xiao Mei visited the scene of the crime. Kong Si's body had been found naked with a plastic bag over his head and his hands cuffed behind his back. But that wasn't even the most cruel part. During the forensic examination the key to the handcuffs was was found in Kong Si's stomach. There was also a tripod at the scene devoid of any fingerprints suggesting that someone might have recorded the incident, but the police never found any video footage. The next day Xiao Mei visited David again, but this time the truth left her completely stunned. David continued to maintain his innocence insisting that he and Kong Si had been close friends for many years. During David's lowest point Kong Si had taken him and suddenly one day Kong Si collapsed at home and David rushed him to the hospital. It was only then that they discovered that Kong Si was suffering from a terminal illness and didn't have much time left. Left. 
Furthermore, it was discovered through further investigation that David could have avoided the death sentence, but he intentionally hired an inexpensive lawyer and the severity of the circumstances ultimately led to his death sentence. The case became even more perplexing. What was David's motive for doing all this? As Xiao Mei returned to her hotel puzzled she discovered a videotape hanging in her room. Upon playing it she was shocked to find footage of Kong Si's death a process that was extremely distressing to witness. The feeling of helplessly watching someone die was suffocating. But who had sent the videotape? Just then Xiao Mei suddenly recalled that during their investigation investigation over the past two days she had frequently spotted a pickup truck following them. As they prepared to hand over the videotape to the lawyer the pickup truck suddenly appeared behind their car. Upon realizing that Xiao Mei had spotted him the driver immediately fled the scene. However after viewing the videotape the lawyer informed them that it could not be used as evidence as it was clearly edited and did not prove David's innocence. Only the unedited complete video could potentially help their case. Just as Xiao Mei was about to leave she suddenly spotted the pickup truck driver nearby so she immediately asked her colleague to tail him. Meanwhile, Xiao Mei went to the prison to question David hoping to learn the driver's identity, but to her dismay her assistant lost track of the driver. The man's name was Wright and he was also a volunteer advocate for the abolition of the death penalty. Additionally, he had been a pursuer of Kong Si. Upon hearing this Xiao Mei couldn't help but suspect that the closeness between Kong Si and Wright might have bred resentment. However, David refuted this idea suggesting that Xiao Mei would need to find out the reason herself. To simulate the murder scene he sealed his mouth with tape and put a plastic bag over his head making sure to seal it tightly with with more tape to prevent air leakage. He then handcuffed his hands behind his back and lay on the ground. As time passed the oxygen inside the plastic bag quickly ran out and he writhed in agony. Fortunately his colleague intervened just in time to save him. Throughout the ordeal he kept repeating the same sentence over and over again. Xiao Mei finally understood. Kong Si had handcuffed her hands behind her back to prevent her from tearing off the plastic bag and swallowing the key thus cutting off any chance of escape. Kong Si had gone to such lengths to abolish the death penalty. Having learned of her terminal illness she immediately decided to use her own death as a means to prove that the death penalty had loopholes. David was merely a scapegoat in her plan. If this was indeed the case the complete video would surely be made public after David's death and the person responsible for releasing it would undoubtedly be right. Today was the day of David's execution and they had only two hours left. They secretly located Wright's home and had a colleague lure him out allowing Xiao Mei to sneak into the room. Fortunately she found the videotape which provided a detailed record of the entire process. Indeed Kong Si's death was a suicide and Wright had been her accomplice. Just just then Xiao Mei's colleague appeared, but Wright had suddenly disappeared. They knew they had to leave immediately. Unbeknownst to them Wright was watching from a distance as if he had intentionally let them escape. With only 30 minutes left until David's execution they had to make the videotape public in order to help the innocent man. Unfortunately the weather seemed to be against them as Xiao Mei's car suddenly broke down. With no other options she ran to the execution site only to find it in complete chaos with proponents and opponents of the death penalty gathered together. Just as Xiao Mei arrived at the scene the officials announced that the execution had been carried out. Out. Xiao Mei collapsed in pain knowing that she had come so close to saving an innocent life. Just when everyone thought it was over Xiao Mei made the video public causing a nationwide sensation. The mayor shifted the blame to Wright and ordered a nationwide manhunt expressing the belief that the death penalty was necessary. Ironically this move only served to galvanize more people and the movement to abolish the death penalty gained even more momentum. By this time Wright had already stolen the $500,000 from the newspaper agency but instead of keeping it for himself he gave all the money to David's wife. IT was only when he opened the box that he realized he had misjudged David from the very beginning. Soon after Xiao Mei received a parcel containing a letter that stated it held the key to her peace of mind. Xiao Mei tore open the doll and found another videotape inside which again showed Kong Si's suicide. What she didn't expect was that David also appeared in the footage. IT turned out that she too had been a participant in the event and they had willingly used themselves as pawns in the quest to abolish the death penalty. Whether the death penalty was abolished or not no longer mattered just as David had said at the beginning. And this final videotape was meant to free Xiao Mei from living with guilt. They had anticipated everything, and that was the story of David's life.